Oh, hey. Hey, you. Hey, did you know that there are a lot of trick takers coming out of Japan these days? I mean, a lot of them. And so that means that in order to actually sell, you got to do something a little zany. You got to be a little bit weird. And sometimes these might even be good, but a majority of the time they are at least interesting. Minasan konnichiwa and welcome to the Board Game Dojo where we take a look at games from East Asia. And today we are going to take a look at some of the most recent games that left us going, ooh, that was interesting or ooh, that was weird. Now, this video is just going to be an introduction to some of these games. These are not meant to be a full review of the games and some of them we might do a full review video of in the future. But this video is just a taste, just a sprinkling of what's coming out of Japan these days. To start off with, we're going to go with a game called Lamb Dice. Get it? Because it's a Lambda Ice and it's a dice trick taking game. So it's Lambda Ice, Lamb Dice, Lamb Dice, ah? Huh? Right away, Lamb Dice was a game after my own heart because it is a bidding trick taking game. The type of trick taking that actually got me into the genre in the first place with Skull King. Players will be dealt a hand of cards in five different colors, and these cards look pretty rad if I do say so myself. They'll also be handed five dice, one of each of the suit colors. The first thing that you'll do is take a look at your hand and decide how many tricks you think you're going to win this round. You will then choose one of your dice. The color does matter, but I'll explain why a bit later and decide how many tricks you think you're gonna win and put it into the box in your corner. So if I think I'm gonna win three tricks this round, I'll put the three in the box on my corner. You'll then play a must follow trick taking game, meaning that whatever the leader plays, the other players, if they have a card of the same color, have to play it. But if they don't have a card of the same color, then they can play whatever they want. Now these dice have two special properties to them. The first one being that they can add to the value of the card. The second one being that it can change the color of the card. So let's say for this example that the player over here has started playing with a purple. The lead is a purple. It's a purple eight in this case. This player looks at their cards and really wants to win this trick. But unfortunately, the only purple card they have is a three. But because it's a must follow, they must play it. But what they can do is they can play the three and then add their purple die to it. So hopefully that they'll be able to beat that eight. Then it goes to the player three. And unfortunately for them, they also really need to win this trick, but unfortunately they don't have any purple cards. Well, no need to fear because they can play another color like so and add their purple dice to it. And now this yellow card becomes a purple card. After that, both players will roll their die. This one ends up with a four. This one ends up with a nine. So this player is the winner of the trick. And importantly, they will take all the colors and the die that they won. And they need to keep these until the end of the round. Why? Because at the end of the round, whoever has taken the most dice gets no bonus multiplier. The less dice you get, then the more multiplier you get. So let's say that these are our four players and let's uh, pretend that everybody hit their bid. Because this person took the least amount of dice, they would get a three times multiplier. They took the second least amount, so they'll get a two times multiplier, then a one times multiplier, and this person, yeah, you hit your bid, but you don't get any bonus multiplier. So it's a balance between taking the amount of tricks that you need to get to your bid, while at the same time trying not to get everybody's dice. And this die play, it adds a little wrinkle into the standard must follow trick taking premise that this game is built on. And yet, while adding something, it isn't hard to grok. It, it's intuitive add. Okay, if I put a dice on the card, then it adds something. That is very intuitive. Oh, if I put a yellow die on top of it, it is now yellow. That's pretty intuitive. It's not very hard to figure it out, but it's interesting enough to make you rethink the strategies that you have to employ. For example, you are constantly throughout the round wondering which tricks you should win and having to deal with that. I don't want to take more dice, but I need to actually hit my bet because guess what? 
3 times 0 is still 0. So I might need to use the dice to actually win. Which one's better? Is it better for me to try to lay back and try to win tricks later so that I don't take these dice that people are putting out? Or is it better to actually get to my bid quicker? Or at all? This game is probably something we're going to do a full review of later, but I hope I've at least given you a taste that interesting doesn't have to mean complex. Something I think worth keeping in mind as we are into our, as others put it, trick-taking renaissance. <sighs> okay, um, what should we, what should we do next? Oh, no, should we rock, paper, scissors? Okay, rock, paper, scissors, bomb. Jun trick, which is short for junken trick, which is Japanese for rock, paper, scissors, trick taking, is a game that I didn't really know what to expect when I first got it. First of all, it comes in a little Ziploc bag. The rules are on this printed out A4 sheet of paper, and the cards look hand cut into these jagged corners. And furthermore, the retail price for this game is $3.71. And I got out of the clearance bid for a dollar, not really knowing what to expect from this game, but was thinking, it's a dollar, why not? As I was going through the rules, it seemed like just a very bare bones, must follow trick taking game, but it has a little bit more to it. First of all, you'll have the threes, sixes, and nines have these bombs on them. And if somebody wins the trick with these cards, they get negative four points at the end of the round. But you can only start playing these bomb cards after somebody for the first time breaks suit, meaning that it's must follow, everybody's following suit, right? But then as soon as somebody plays one that's off suit, now you can start bombing each other. And that just little wrinkle would have been enough to make me at least somewhat intrigued. But then you have the namesake rock, paper, and scissors. And how these work is that if everybody follows suit properly, it's just the highest card that wins. But if two different suits are played on the table, then whoever would win rock, paper, scissors wins the trick. And if all three are played on the table, it's whoever has the smallest number wins the trick. And what this means is that no matter what card in this deck you are built, there is a way for you to win with it. You never quite know how your hand is going to go until you start playing. Even the strongest of hands might be a bad thing because that means that you are going to win a lot of the bombs and at the end of the round, lose a lot of those points that you would have won with all of the tricks. It really makes it feel almost like rock, paper, scissors, where it almost feels like a balance of trying to play each other as much as you're trying to play the game. For a trick taker in which I had no idea what to expect for, you know, these are one of those games where they could be really good or they could be really bad. It was definitely pretty interesting. Okay, that's so cool that you found a game in the clearance bin. You're such a hipster, but can we please get to a game that we've maybe actually heard of before? I don't know something that they've talked about on Shut Up and Sit Down or Board Game Mirage before. Bug Council of Backyardia is a game that blends trick-taking and Moncala. That is a sentence that I never thought I was going to utter in my life. Up here we have our Moncala board and here we will play our cards. In this example we are going to play a four-person game. So if the lead plays, let's say here, okay, then followed up, like these. All right, now we have our four cards. I should play that right side up. Yeah. So now we have an eight, nine, six, one. Okay. This person, because they played the highest, would win the trick and get points at the end of the round. But the person who played the lowest card that is of the same suit gets to play Moncala. So that would be this player here. So they can pick any one of these that has at least one cube on it already and play a little bit of Moncala. So let's say they'll pick up this one here and they'll drop it around. And it would be on to the next trick. Now, why does this Moncala mechanism really matter? Well, it's because there are two special properties of this Moncala board. The first is what to do when there's cards that are played off suit. So let's say the lead 
player plays yellow here, which is bees. Okay. The next player plays another B, so follows. But then the next two players both don't have Bs. So the first player plays this one, and the next player plays this one. Now, usually, it would be the highest of the lead suit. But with this Moncala mechanism, what it does is you have to look at the Moncala to see which bug has the most powers. So in this example, the yellow, the Bs, have two. The grays have zero and blue has three. So in this case, actually, this player would win the trick. But this player would get to play Moncala because they have the lowest value of the lead suit. The other reason this board matters is for allegiances. At the beginning of the round, you'll say either, yep, I want an allegiance or no, I do not want an allegiance at all. The no allegiance is simply the shoot the moon strategy. If you get zero tricks throughout the round, then you get 10 points plus however many are in this middle section here. But in the allegiance category, whatever is your leftover card at the end of the round is your allegiance. You get points based on the number of tricks that you won plus however many cubes are in your allegiance faction. And that's basically how to play Bug Council of Backyardia. Again, this goes back to what we talked about with Lamb Dice, where it adds something interesting to the mechanics. I never thought that it was going to work of Mancala with a trick-taking game, but because both of them work in a very intuitive way, it just works as a game. From the very first game, you can figure out how to make the Mancala work for you. Now, it, can you do it well? I, uh, I don't know. but you can at least figure it out so that you're not spending the whole game trying to understand the rules you're trying to win. We are going to do a full review of it in the future with another one of Engro Games' games, but for now, just know that this one is a very interesting one worth checking out. That's Bug Council of Backyardia. Can I go back to talking about games they haven't heard of before now? Uh, fine, but it better not be anything weird. <laughs> Okay, hear me out. This game checks all of the boxes of things that might find just a little bit weird and a little bit wacky. Does it come in a shoebox? Yes, it does. Does it have little sauce containers that I used to definitely put in my wife's bento boxes? Definitely does. Does it on the cover have art that definitely reminds me of Pop Team Epic? <laughs> Yes. Yes, it does. This game is called DTWWW, which just stands for Dice Trick Taking LOL. Yeah, I don't know of a game that also has LOL in the title. And this game is a fully dice trick taking game game. In fact, there are no cards in this at all. Besides for that fake money and sauce containers earlier, you just get a little bag of dice. How it works is that each player will get a shield. And at the beginning of the game, you'll dump the dice into this bag here. And you will have three public dice for everybody to see and six private dice that you'll put behind your shield. From there, it's a little bit of a complicated trick taker because everything is just a little bit unintuitive. It's just a little bit backwards from how you're used to thinking about things. For example, when you roll the dice and you get your numbers and you're wanting to play them out to the table, the leader will play and you have a choice of matching either the color or the number, color taking priority. If everybody plays the same color, which is good, then the smallest number wins. If everybody goes by number, then it's the last person who plays. And it makes this game feel a bit, as Taylor's Trick Taking Table put it, it can feel a bit flow charty. If this happens, then this happens. And, or if this doesn't happen and it's a mix of the colors and the numbers, then this happens. And I can get it and it's a little bit to grok for sure. But at the very least, I have to commend the designers of this game. They have figured out a way to make a fully dice trick taker. And yeah, the first step is more 
interesting than it is good, but at the very least, it's well worth trying out just to see how weird it is. That's DTWWW. Eh, I've been feeling this for a while. The stars are starting to come out. Today, we've had Moncala and trick taking. We've had rock, paper, scissors and trick taking. We've had dice and trick taking. Now, let's end this video with drawing and trick taking. Wait, drawing? I suck at drawing. The way this works is that you will start by setting up a board, and each one of these little magnets has a star number on it. I'm not sure if you can see that in between my fingers, but like this one is a four, for example, or this one is a five down here. But this will be put in the middle of the board in the middle of the table. Then you'll be playing a must-follow trick taker, but it has a little bit of a catch. The lead player will play a card, so in this case, let's say it's a red four. Then the other players will then face down play their cards, and then on the count of three, one, two, three, reveal. They need to follow the same color if possible, hence the must-follow. But then afterwards, we need to take a look at the tops of our cards, both for the values and for these letters, because if a majority of us play S's, then it's the smallest number that wins. If a majority of people play L's, then the largest number wins. So in this case, because we have two L's and only one S, then it's the largest number that wins, which means that it's this nine right here, which means that this is the player that gets to draw on the board. Now, the way that the drawing works is that you will connect the stars of the cards that were just played. So in this case, for seven and nine using that color marker seven nine and four and there is a ruler included in the box so you can draw a nice straight line but this is just for demonstration purposes and then we would reset and go to the next trick the reason that this board matters is because at the end of the game you'll have one card left over and on that card will have a bid on the bottom whoever comes closest of their bids to the number of constellations on the board is the winner of the game. I have to be honest, usually I'm not a huge drawing game fan, although there are a couple of exceptions. And I bought this one without knowing what it was. So then when I opened up the rule book and learned that, oh, this is a trick taking and drawing game, I wasn't that excited. But sure enough, when I played it with three players, and I mean like three players is probably the best count for this game, it just shined, no pun intended. It never fails when I introduce this game to people to elicit that what response. I'm sorry, we're going to do trick taking and we're going to be drawing things. How exactly is that going to work? And the first game is always kind of this learning game and it doesn't take very long to do. And then assuredly, okay, we're going to play a second game and it's much more intense. It's a fun kind of interesting. It's a little bit of something extra. There are just so many interesting things going on in this game. For example, I'm not going to pretend that I've played tons and tons and tons of trick takers, although I've played a lot. But this is the first time I've ever seen where the followers are playing their cards face down and then they reveal it simultaneously. That's kind of cool. Or the fact that, okay, whatever the majority of the S's or the L's, the smalls or the larges is who gets to win that trick. Okay, that's interesting. Then, so you have those two things. Those two things by itself are interesting. Then you add in the drawing aspect where the winner of the game is whatever the leftover cards bid is. And it's just a lot of things to take in. But for being a lot of things to take in, everything is intuitive. And I feel like I've said that a couple times throughout this video, the games that are interesting are not necessarily hard to understand. They're just something that gets added to this basic trick taking structure that has been around for hundreds of years. Just that little wrinkle, that little bit extra that pushes this into something that is worth checking out. Well, that's going to do it for today. I hope that you very much enjoyed the video. And if you did, please leave a comment below. Let us know because this video is pretty unlike the other videos that we normally do. We're trying to constantly get better. So we love the feedback from you. And if there's a game that you want to hear about, let us know in the comments below as well. Thank you very much to Gary, who is our first coffee supporter. If you want to support us, though, to help us buy games, I'm not going to say it very often because I hate asking for it. But if you can, I'll leave the link down below. It helps us buy games to help review for you.
put that out of the way. Thank you so, so, so much for watching today. Arigatou gozaimashita. Until next time, じゃあね。